All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is AJ Fraser. I'm the uh, Vice President of Business Development here at Agent VI. Um, I wanted to open the session with my camera on Zoom so you can see that I am a real person. This is a live presentation. Um, but my opinion is I become a distraction. So here I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to my camera. So now you don't have to see my, uh, you know, my face over the presentation. So what we're going to be covering today is, uh, you know, as many of you know, in fact, I recognize some of the names that are signed in here today as longtime um, Agent VI friends, partners, resellers, customers. And as uh, many of you know that we've had a, uh, we're an 18 year old company and we've had a product in the marketplace for many years called Savvy. Uh, uh, but you also might be aware that uh, almost five years ago, we launched an entirely new analytics platform called Innovi. So we have Savvy and we've had Innovi for the last five years. And we're gonna do a little bit of comparison about what the difference is between Savvy and Anovi, but for the purposes of uh, today's presentation, we're going to be discussing the end of sale of Savvy, because at this point, Anovi has really reached feature uh, parity with Savvy, and it just has a lot better, a lot more to offer. So from a company um, standpoint, this is our first step uh, to starting to end the sale of Savvy, and, and actually, in truth, at this point, most of our, our new licenses sold have been Anovi over the last uh, several years anyways. So, so let me right, get right into the presentation. <clears throat> so the first question, uh, why would somebody want to upgrade uh, from Savvy to Anovi? <clears throat> or what are the main differences between Savvy and Anovi? They're actually pretty fundamental, even though from a feature standpoint, a lot of the features look the same. They really are uh, absolutely different. And let's start at the at the most basic level. Savvy uh, as an analytics platform, the, the software that is the core analytics engine for Savvy is now over 10 years old. It's based on an older method of doing analytics that was more pixel based, uh, based on you know the grouping of pixels, that, that's how the older analytics work. And some of the, the inherent limitations to the older methods of analytics, by the way, there's still a lot of analytics companies in the markets right now that use this method, this pixel-based method. Some of the, the challenges are it's limited in what you can classify. So it's very difficult sometimes, for example, to tell the difference between a person and a deer, just because the classification doesn't work as well in the pixel-based analytics very prone to false alarms. It's just the nature of that method tends to generate a fair amount of false alarms. And as such, to try to reduce the false alarms, you end up with very complex setups and maintenance. With the Novi, when we started working on that in 2015, uh, we moved to uh, an artificial intelligence-based analytic. Now, uh, what that really means is it's a, it's a completely different way that we generate classification and we look at the image. So one of the benefits of the AI-based analytics is the classification uh, is much more accurate. Not only is it more accurate, it means we can classify more objects. As you'll see in a minute, versus, you know, Savvy used to basically do vehicles. And then maybe through some tweaking and maintenance, you could sort of set the parameters for a big vehicle. And then you would call that a truck, but really you don't know if it was a truck, it was just a big vehicle. But in these new AI-based analytics, for example, we can actually tell the difference between a car and a truck, a motorcycle, a bicycle, because the al algorithms can actually look at the object and classify it. One of the benefits that comes from that is it significantly reduces the false alarm. So Anovi has a much lower false alarm rate than Savvy. And that's been proven now over four years, especially by customers that upgraded from Savvy to Anovi literally the false alarm reduction in some cases was more than an order of magnitude. That means more than 10 times better with Anovi than it was with Savvy. And then one of the other big reasons that we started and built a whole new algorithm for Anovi is it's now truly self-learning. There's just no tweaking that needs to be done. In fact, the more you try to mess with the image by masking things and trying to set tweaks, you actually reduce the, uh, the performance of the algorithm because the AI algorithm is designed to be smart and continually learning. 
So the Anovi algorithm, as you'll see in a few minutes, is just much better than the Savvy algorithm. But it wasn't all just about better performance. Um, because of the limitations of Savvy, we were starting to get to a point where some of the functions that we wanted to do with Savvy just couldn't be done. The, the product was just getting to an age where it was hard to add new features and capabilities. So you'll see in a minute, we've added some, some pretty cool new features with Anovi. So more, more advanced capabilities with Anovi. It also just re realizing that we're in an industry that's different now than it was 10 years ago. Uh, and this, and, and I know not everybody on this call will agree with this, but this is our position and, and certainly my opinion. The world is different now. 10 years ago, analytics were largely installed on a site by site basis. You would go out to a customer site, you would put in maybe a server or something and you would install everything at that site. And if they had five sites, you just went and did that five different times. That was the way it used to be done. But now in the modern age of um, you know, cloud and IT deployments, we find a large number of customers and growing number of customers, if they have multiple sites, uh, they want to deploy them all as one common system. So federation is an expectation for a lot of large customers. Um, it used to be that the connectivity with sites was pretty low. Now connectivity between sites is almost a given. In fact, that's becoming even more common as manufacturers, Agent VI included, do more and more of our work through remote um, sessions versus sending people to the field. Customers have realized that they have to have bandwidth at all of their sites. It's not, it's not universal, but it's getting pretty close to that point. And also it used to be the customers would only update their systems when there was some major technology refresh. And that's, you just can't do that anymore. Maybe in the security industry, a lot of customers are still trying to do that. But if you go to the IT world and you try to tell Microsoft or Oracle or whoever, you know, you're operate, you know, whoever you're, you're buying products from that you're only going to deploy, uh, update the system every three years. They, they just won't play that way. At, Systems need to be updated regularly. That's becoming the new norm. Um, and that has some benefits to the customers. It reduces overall maintenance, but it also means they're continually getting improvements in the system, which can include new features. So let's talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the savvy transition itself. So we're gonna do this presentation a little bit backwards. I'm gonna cover what the end of sale of savvy is and, and what the upgrade options are. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about Anovi for those of you who might not be that familiar with it. All right, so the end of sale. Now, you're, there are really two different situations that a customer would find themselves with savvy end of sale. First, if you're an existing savvy customer, you've got an active deployment, your system is under maintenance. Here are your options. You can continue to buy savvy licenses through the end of March 31st, which is just a little over 30 days from now. By the way, we announced this program formally uh, last year. I think it was in October. Um, I think we did our first up our first end of sale webinar in November, if I remember correctly. So this has been announced for a while. So that you can buy licenses through the end of next month. And you could, or you can upgrade your system to Anovi, and we have a special program, which I'll show you in the next slide for customers that want to upgrade. I'll give you a little bit of a, a hint. Most of our larger savvy customers, at least in North America, have already started their planning for the upgrade, if not already doing their upgrade to Anovi. Or if you're in a place where you just can't do an upgrade right now, sometimes that happens. You can buy your maintenance through the end of this year, through uh, December 31st, 2021, and that reserves your right to do an upgrade at some point and get the benefits of the upgrade program through the end of this year. So if you can't act immediately, you do have options to exercise this, this um, number two scenario of convert your system to Anovi. You just have to make sure you maintain the update, the maintenance through the end of the year. Now, if you're a newer customer or you have savvy quotes for customers, you really have two different, well, the options are pretty much what they are below. So um, that, that quote will be, you know, can be, uh, will be converted to an Anovi quote and we will preserve the pricing for savvy up through the end of uh, March 31st, which means 
you know, if the Anovi, if the a new Anovi system is a little bit more expensive, you know, you'll get the system at the price of the Savvy. I will tell you the pricing difference is not Matt, it's, there's not a huge pricing difference between Anovi and Savvy. So this is more of a re, uh, respect, um, but the reality is Anovi is not dramatically more expensive than Savvy. In some cases it's actually cheaper and that's true. But, you know, so you'll get the, the, the best price possible. After March 31st of this year, there's no new sale of Savvy licenses. So by definition, all new systems will be requoted as Anovi. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what this upgrade program looks like. A lot of bullets here, but it's actually pretty logical. As you're gonna see later on in the presentation, Anovi actually has two different ways that it can be purchased. It can be purchased as an agent VI hosted, where we actually run the, the bulk of the software, the key aspects of the software in a, in a cloud system. We actually use um, Google Cloud. Um, and that's an agent VI hosted system, but we also have a customer hosted, which is normally where the customer is going to install that, you know, on their own site. So here's how your options work. If you've got a system that's, that's was purchased, um, before March 31st of 2020, that's last year, if I, we almost say pre COVID, if you have a pre COVID, um, uh, system, then your options look like this you can convert that system to agent VI hosted. And basically what you do is going forward, you continue to pay the maintenance, but now that maintenance will be the annual um, license renewal for our agent VI hosted system. So we even have an example here. Let's say you have a, a, a savvy enterprise license, that's MSRP $990. Uh, that a one year of maintenance on that would be 18%. So it's $178.20 per year that you're paying. So now all you would do is you would convert to agent VI hosted, but now you're going to pay the $178 every year, but that's now going to be for the license for the the actual cost of the analytics license. Um, and that price will be guaranteed for three years. By the way, um, we'll get into math a little bit later. That's a very, very good deal. Because in that $178, we are now taking over all of the hardware maintenance, um, you know, as a hosted service provider. So it's a very efficient um, model. If you have any remaining, uh, like if you have prepaid maintenance going forward, uh, then that maintenance will give you credit for that by reducing that $178 even further by 18% for every year of remaining um, you know, SUP that you have. If you want a customer hosted system, so you want to uh, move from Savvy to Anovi, but now you're going to do it on your own installation, uh, similar model, but now you just you pay twice the annual maintenance. So instead of $178, you're going to pay $356 but you pay that for one time and now your savvy licenses will be converted to new Anovi licenses. And then at that point, you do need to pay maintenance going forward. Uh, but if you have remaining um, you know, maintenance or SUP, uh, then that will be extended on those new licenses. So there's a conversion option there. Now, what about systems that were installed after March 31st of 2020? Well, that's a little bit different. In that case, the, the first hosted option is still the same because you're really, if you're converting from um, a perpetual license that you purchased that is owned by the customer to what is really a SaaS or an agent VI hosted, then it's the same model. You, you know, you get the, you know, you continue to pay the maintenance and you get now an annual uh, hosted license versus the perpetual license. Uh, and then that price will be reduced even further by 18% if you have any remaining SUP. So really the first option for customers who purchased within the last year is the same for both, um, for both the above case and this lower case. If you have a customer hosted, meaning you've installed your own system in the last year, well, then what we'll do is we'll quote you an Anovi system, but we'll give you a dollar for dollar credit for everything you spent on Savvy. And these are for only for systems that were purchased after March 31st, 2020. So if you spent $50,000 in the last year for a Savvy system, we'll give you a quote for the equivalent Anovi system, but we'll give you a $50,000 credit 
based on what you paid for um, for the savvy system. So it's really a you know a price assurance. Okay, if this all seems confusing, um, it, maybe in words it sounds confusing. Uh, please feel free to uh, contact your agent VI sales manager and and they'll walk you through the different options because actually it was designed to be the simplest conversion options for the most scenarios that we're aware of. And we do have a lot of customers that have already gone through this program. So we know it works pretty well. Just to illustrate a little bit though, the benefits from a cost standpoint of Anovi versus Savvy. So this example here it, is, it was done initially as a comparison for a customer that was looking for an upgrade, but then we realized that it actually illustrates the, the significant cost reductions with Anovi. And, the, and these were part of the driving factors five years ago. So as I said before, the license cost is really, if you're using the program in some cases, so this was taken from a real example from a customer in Europe that was evaluating their options, the license cost was the same because we basically made it so that the, the cost of license conversion was identical for Savvy or Novi. Uh, the three-year maintenance was basically the same. So, so from a software standpoint, Savvy and Novi, even where the pricing is different, for a lot of customers, it's very similar. Um, and in some cases, it's exactly the same. But that's where the similarities end. So on the hardware side, now it looks like if you look at Savvy, you say, oh, Savvy is actually cheaper for this customer in Europe because it's only 10,000 euros, uh, but then for Novi, it's 20,000 euros. By the way, I'd like to point out that that's only because this customer required an on-premise installation. So for the on-premise installation, instead of using our hardware that's hosted in the cloud, they need to build their own hardware. So that required um, a little bit of extra hardware for what we call the core. All right, so that so there was a price increase, but it was mostly because they wanted to do it um, on prem versus in the cloud. If they had done it uh, actually the other way around, the price would have gone down, potentially gone down for the hardware. But in this example, they they wanted an on prem. Uh, the installation cost. This is where things start to become dramatically different, because anybody who's done um, installation for the you know, uh, savvy or any of the analytics from the past, the older generation analytics. And by the way, still a way a lot of analytics companies still do it. They know what this, this next line is. You install the software and you think you're done. Then all of a sudden you have to start going and dealing with all of the camera setup, all the configuration, all the masking, all the tweaking. And what you realize very quickly is the time to install a large system um, can be that the, the price for labor to install and set up the cameras and the, can be more than the actual software that you spent money on. And that's because the old analytics were just, they're just a lot of work to set them up and configure them. Uh, Anovi is a, a self-learning system. So literally, if you're used to going to a camera, seeing a bush and drawing a box around it and then masking it out saying, ignore that bush, you don't need to do that with Anovi. Anovi will not have a problem with a bush. But Anovi knows that a bush is not a person. Um, and so your setup cost is actually just the cost of configuring the site, which is really just an IT setup of um, the edge appliances you'll see in a few minutes so that it gets connected correctly back to the core. That will make more sense when I show you the architecture. But your, your actual installation time for the analytics is very small. Uh, the same way for the yearly maintenance, uh, you know, because of all of the setup and maintenance or the setup and tweaking that was required for the older analytics, you couldn't just set them up once and walk away forever because things change. Uh, you know, camera lenses get dirty, cameras get moved, trees grow leaves in the spring and they lose them in the fall. It snows. In fact, actually, I'll show you a camera where there's snow on the ground just from the, um, you know, uh, just recently. Oh, if we get time for demo, we'll see. Um, but so your yearly maintenance cost with Savvy was pretty high because you had to keep revisiting that system. With Anovi, that yearly maintenance cost is actually relatively low because you don't have to go keep tweaking and maintaining the analytics. The maintenance that you will be performing is largely due just to normal updates. 
And by the way, if you use our cloud service, that's done automatically. So you don't even have to do that. So if you look at the, the net in real dollar terms, just the savings on installation and maintenance cost alone overcomes any hardware differences significantly where your TCO on Anovi is better than 30% is 30 better than Savvy. And if you go to the cloud-based service, it gets even, it gets way better than that. While we didn't do a calculation of that, just to, to not bore everybody with numbers, the cloud, the savings for using a cloud service are obvious. They're not really related directly to our licensing. As I keep saying, our licensing model between Anovi and Savvy is not dramatically different. Our licensing and pricing between cloud and on-prem is also not dramatically different. There's a difference in price, but it's, it's logically equal. However, what you get for the cloud computing makes actually secretly, if you really do the numbers, you'll find that uh, our, our recurring licensing, what we call agent VI hosted, what some people would call SaaS, S-A-A-S, which is a software as a service, is dramatically cheaper than our on-prem because if you look at this picture here, when you do on-prem, you pay agent VI for a software license. That's it. In fact, you know, my finance people, they sort of love that. You know, we literally take an order, we send you a, a, a email with a, you know, a license certificate and as far as they're concerned, we're done. We delivered software. In fact, we don't even, you, you have to go download it. We don't even have to ship it to you. And the on-prem, you buy a license from Agent VI, but then you own everything else. All the implementation, all the hardware, any IT personnel related to maintaining that, uh, the ongoing maintenance. That means if there are operating system updates, that's your responsibility, not ours. Uh, even training, even if you paid us for training, internally you have operators that have to maintain the system so all of that that effort below the iceberg in this example is your responsibility either as the integrator or the end user in an on-prem in a cloud-based solution like what we're selling with agent vi hosted the SaaS, 68 percent of the effort is actually part of our subscription that means if uh, you know, if we we've got a Linux an update to the Linux operating system, not only do we all do all the testing, but in our cloud-based service, we have to maintain that entire environment. We do all of the backups on databases. If there's issues where databases are running slow because maybe you know there's some loading factor, then we have to go in and we have to tweak all of that, uh, all the resource utilization, all the hardware. And, and really the cost that's left to you as the integrator or the customer is just whatever the implementation cost is, which is really your site, your, your, the work you have to do at the site. And then only the training that you need to do to use the system, not to maintain it. So, so when you're in a cloud environment um, as our, our hosted system is, you know, you're really getting a, a turnkey working solution you're now just responsible for learning how to use it. Uh, so it's a big savings for customers that go that way. All right, let's talk a little bit more uh, now about Anovi itself. So as I talked a few minutes ago about the, um, you know, about the algorithm benefits, uh, these are two great examples. These are, by the way, real customer cameras. So these are, you know, the real deal here. And, um, and I'm hoping that anybody that spent a lot of time with Savvy or the, you know, the older analytics in the market would look at these images and smile and realize these, were, these would have been hopeless images for, um, you know, for an analytic that is pixel-based. First off, in the left, left image, you can barely see the person through the steam. Like it's, almost un, you know, it, it's almost impossible to see them. And the right image, you have so much blurring and raindrops on your camera lens that the image is obstructed. And then in another hour, those, those raindrops will evaporate off the lens and there'll be dirty lens, but it'll be more clear. But these new AI powered analytics, once you do them right, and you really teach the system how to classify a person, a bicycle, an you know, a motorcycle, a truck, a bus, they're brilliantly good at seeing through bad um, images. In fact, 
why we don't advise this, one of the secrets that we stumbled onto, we didn't actually, I, I don't think we even really honestly knew this until customers started deploying Anovi, is how many customers we have now that are still using our analytics on old, in some cases, 10 year old analog cameras, because the get the images are so bad, but the analytic is so much better that it really isn't bothered by bad video. And so they just said, it's cheaper to just go buy some encoders and hook them up to the analog cameras because I don't have to run new wiring. And the customer didn't really care because they're just using it for security. And the analytics worked so well, it actually you know pushed out the need to replace the cameras. Not Again, not that we advise that, but that's a real scenario. It happened a bunch of times. We learned that only when we started seeing customers tell us about their, how good we worked on analog cameras. But there's more to it than just, um, you know, bad camera image, you know, bad, you know, camera images. Here's two more examples, harsh weather. Uh, you know, you know, I was up in New York City yesterday with a, a large trans, transportation customer that we work with, and it was snowing like crazy. And they're like, oh, that's going to really mess up the testing. And I, I told them with truth, I said, no, that, that's, that's old school thinking. They, they, they're, they're pretty friendly. So I could, I, and, and they're New Yorkers. So I could talk like that. You know, you're thinking like, you know, old school thinking that, uh, you know, these new algorithms don't have this, don't have problems with snow and rain. And you can see on the right, you've got bugs, you know, you know, flying in front of the, the image insects. Uh, the algorithms are just not sensitive to those kind of things the way it used to be. So you get better detection accuracy, but you also eliminate what are probably, in, in just the, these two slides, for anybody who's worked with um, pixel-based analytics, I've now shown you the most common complaint for analytics going back years, which is they only work under perfect conditions. And these new analytics, they work much better, even under very, very bad conditions. All right, that's the algorithm. But we're also able to do more. And a lot of the reason we're able to do more is because the algorithm is, is not just better at classifying, it's also fundamentally more accurate. If you get a lot of false alarms and you don't classify well, there's a lot of things that you want to do with analytics that you just can't do. So what we've done with Anovi is we've now gone to a suite of analytics. In fact, let me just open this whole slide up here so you can see everything. Where the one algorithm engine can now give you all of the different feature sets in one application that your customers might want. All the real-time detections, we'll talk about that in a moment. But now we've added anomaly detection, which I'll also talk about. I'll show you an example of that in just another minute. Um, but video investigation. Now we've done invest video search or video investigation for years. Uh, we've done that on, on Savvy for years. What's different now is the investigation is even more accurate because you can now classify for more objects, but also it's federated. So whereas with Savvy, you could do video, you could do use our search and Savvy. It was a fairly complicated setup if you weren't all at one site. But if you had, and if you had multiple sites, you could make it work with Savvy, but honestly, it was pretty hard to set up. But now, uh, since Anovi is designed to deal with multiple sites you know, as a federated system, again, you'll see that in a minute, that investigation and that search is very powerful. Uh, and then operational insights. That's just basically the ability to drag, uh, draw information out of the system. So let's look a little bit more into the details. Just like we've always done real-time detections, if you know what you're looking for, then you should just use a rule. That's, that's the best guidance we can give. Now what's different with, with Anobi is because the analytics are more accurate and because we also have more classifications, I have all of the standard behaviors that you're used to, occupancy, crossing line, moving area, stop vehicles, but now I can do them on a large class of different targets. People, bicycles, motorcycles, cars, uh, pan actually sort of the difference between a panel truck and a truck, a big truck, buses. These are all classifications we've taught the system. I can also do a lot of uh, some of the newer analytics that require more ac accuracy, like grouping. We can now do better than we did before, which means you can also do things like social distancing, people counting is better, vehicle statistics, 
all of these things have gotten better, even though we've done them for years, but with a better analytics engine, we're able to um, operate better. So let's, but let's talk about customers that have open spaces. This is specifically to cities. Uh, it might also include, for example, casinos and other customers that have areas where people are allowed to be there. So you don't really know what rule you would set up, but maybe you know when something not right's happening. So we also introduced uh, an anomaly detection. Now, let me explain what anomaly is. Because there's been, in fact, there's people out there running around still, I think, um, explaining, you know, if you remember, you know, the former BRS guys, and they'd run around saying abnormality detection. And it was kind of like they're, they were like magicians, like, look, it's magic, it just works. But really, the, the problem that people had with this is they didn't understand what anomaly detection really is. And I think we've figured it out. You, we don't know that something wrong is happening. Really a human eye is needed to know if something really wrong is happening. But we can, as a analytics company, look at a scene over the course of two or three weeks, we can learn what a normal pattern of behavior is. And then an anomaly is anything that's just different. So this is a great example. This is a real example uh, from springtime in Seattle when there was some marches. That's a real camera that the left side would represent the normal view. You'd have cars, you'd have people walking up sidewalks, crossing in the crosswalk, all, all very basic. And then the anomaly rule was set up and then there was a march, okay? And in that march, obviously you had a lot of people walking up the middle of the street, which is different. Certainly doesn't mean anything was wrong, in fact, you know, actually kind of as an American, I, I support free speech through marches. I was you know, kind of like, hey, that's, 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 you know, the point, you know, that's, that's, you know, citizens doing, doing their part. But from a analytics standpoint, it was something different. And so the alarm was generated as an anomaly. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move very quickly through the next couple slides, because I'm actually doing good enough time wise here i'm going to be able to open up a live system here for just a minute so we introduced map based um algorithms that can show you an alarm uh, on a map or a location for most people that have high-end vmss you already have a mapping based system but for some of our customers particularly in the central monitoring world this is a very nice offering because a lot of those customers don't use a vms they just literally are just looking for alerts um, as I mentioned before, we've done search for years, but we uh, introduced an investigation module uh, that now can be done through Federation. I'll show that example later. Operational insights, which is just a bunch of information that you might want to gather. So the ability to be able to generate reports, for example, if you're a transit customer and you want to see how many people went into a certain station, you know, on your rail line maybe because you're doing some budgeting and you need to budget based on the, you know, the average number of users going in and out of an, an open station. Now, let me, uh, again, since I want to leave a minute to actually open up a live system, let me jump over to the improved architecture. So you notice we left architecture for last. That takes a lot of discipline because usually we want to get to the techie slides first. Here we've left them for last. This is what I've been talking about. There's two ways that you can actually buy and deploy uh, Anovi. The method on the right is our agent VI hosted. This is our cloud offering. We actually um, host the Anovi core, which is sort of the central brains of the analytics. We run that in the cloud and you're just buying a service. So here the Anovi Edge software, you would run that at each of your sites. You can see here on the right, there's an Anovi Edge, then in the middle, there's an Anovi Edge. And that could be uh, our appliance. It could be software running on your own hardware. There's a lot of ways to run the Anovi Edge. But that, that Anovi Edge is doing the video processing. So in theory, we never need to actually remove the video from the site because the Anovi Edge is going to convert the video into metadata that's sent up to to our core running in the cloud. And then from that place, we can do everything. We can finish off the algorithms. We can, uh, we can also push updates to the edge. You can centrally log in and manage multiple sites. 
It's a very powerful model for any customer that can, that can use the cloud. Honestly, they'd be silly to not use the cloud because it's both cheaper for them, uh, but it also gives them immediate, you know, ease to, it's very easy to deploy and they can have a system up and running um, in a day. And that's not an exaggeration. In fact, in the central monitoring industry where we've, we've had some great success, one of the reasons we had success is a central monitoring customer can take an edge appliant, drop ship it to a site, have a site manager just plug it into the network and they can manage everything else just from their, their account that they log into the core, into the, our hosted core. But we have customers, some of which don't want to use our cloud. In that case, they can buy a license for the Anobi core and they can build their own private system running in their data center, their own data center. And I would say right now in, in North America in particular, uh, we have some you know, public you know, agencies that are becoming more cloud friendly and they're using our cloud, but a lot of our transportation customers, utility customers, cities, they still want stuff running in their own data room. That's fine. We can deploy on-prem, but that's really a choice that they make. And frankly, they make it as a choice that is a more expensive option. But, you know, hey, if you're government in your city and you have the budget for it, then that's a choice you can make. So the architecture, though, is always federated by design. This idea you can have an unlimited number of Anovi edges and you have one core for management. This is a little bit more of a deep dive, just really saying what I said a minute ago, that the basic flow of video as it goes from a camera, uh, normally into an edge device, that could be our appliance or it could be software running on a server. It goes through some kind of a wide area network uh, to an Anovi core that is sort of the middleware and then the Anobi core communicates through either our browser or it communicates um, out to the, uh, ultimately out to the system, you know, which could be a VMS like a Genetech or a Milestone or a you know, Variant or whoever that might be with the alarms. All right, with that said, I've gone very fast because I didn't want to just kill you all with slides. So let me stop sharing for a second. And I'm still leaving room for some question and answer, but I but I always like to show fun stuff. Because you know, we, we all do PowerPoint and then we start to believe our own PowerPoint. And then eventually we realize, well, PowerPoint's PowerPoint. Um, so let me, oh, where am I going here? Um, oh, here we go. All right. Okay. Now, if I switched correctly, what you should be seeing is uh, a Chrome browser and then an opening window with an OV uh, little block in the middle. This is actually a live system. So when I say this is a joke, it's really not a joke. If you see something crazy happening, it's really happening. Okay. Like, I don't know what we're about to see because I'm going to be looking at real cameras all over the world. So I log in. So I have a user and I have certain credentials for an account. So now when I log in immediately, right now, you're already seeing one of the benefits of Anobi. I got cameras all over the world, but I can see, for example, I've got a camera here. Uh, looks like one of these cameras up in the north northwest that's uh, in some kind of an orange status, which means there's a warning happening. A lot of times that means it's dropping frames. Uh, but I can see most of the cameras in my system at the moment are pretty healthy. So let's go ahead and see what I have here to show. Uh, first, I have um, some city cameras. In fact, actually, these are the cameras that, uh, oh, interestingly, the, earlier this morning, these Jackson Hole cameras were pretty healthy, but something's going on. So I can go all the way down. Ah, look at that. How about the, when I tell you this is live, wow, it doesn't get any better than that. So this is, this is Jackson Hole, Wyoming in real time right now. So I think it's about 9.30 a.m. That person in that red jacket is walking across. This snow was not happening earlier this morning. So we can see here that I've got a real live scene. You can see I, uh, that green box around that truck where, where that means we've identified that as a truck. Um, and you know what, just to be fun, um, let's go ahead and just do a quick search here. So let's see if I had any rules set up. Let's see, I have, 
Oh, I have a grouping rule. Uh, well, let's see if, I, I don't know, there might not have been a lot of grouping recently. Here, I just want to open that rule. You can see this is what the image looks like when there's not a lot of snow. And so let's see, I go to my monitor window here. Okay, and I can see uh, that last night uh, at 11 p.m., I had some grouping violations and these are these are legit. So here, here's a great one. If I double click, uh, we actually capture a verification clip. And, and I just gotta tell you, as somebody that's been doing analytics for um, a long time, I just don't know I could give a better demo than that. Last night at 11 o'clock, there was no snow. Uh, we detected valid grouping, night lights. Look at all these, I don't know, what in the world? I don't know what they're doing in Jackson Hole that they've got Christmas lights up here. Um, but in any event, they're having a, you know, a grand old time there in Jackson Hole last night at 11 o'clock. Um, and then this morning, when I look at this camera live, you can see um, I'm now back to an actual snow scene. And so let's, while we're here, let's go ahead and just for kicks, let's do a, an investigation. So now I'm looking at this camera. Now I've got different ways I can choose these cameras. I can choose them by selecting them on the map. Uh, just for speed, since I'm just about out of time here, I'm just going to do a quick camera selection, do it this way. And here, I want to just look at people that were maybe walking up through this crosswalk. Like this. You can see I'm just, I'm just narrowing the zone just to make the, the search a little bit more interesting. So I've now selected the zone. Here, I'm going to do people moving in an area because I'm just doing this very quickly. I could set a dwell time. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do objects. So here I'm going to do people. I'm going to start by just doing any people. Time range last three hours. All right, so let's take a look here. And when I do run my investigation now, I'm looking back through my database. And sure enough, I can see that I'm starting to get some uh, valid detections here. So here, um, I'm going to just Normal, just different, uh, different activity, different search results of people walking up and down through this area. And by the way, I'd like to point out versus some of our competitors in the marketplace, I'm going to give you our secret, okay? The way our search has always worked and the reason our search is a true search is we, the patent that we built in 2003 was all about the method to be able to efficiently process video in real time. And so we do our method, which is an extraction where we look at every camera feed that comes into our system. And the moment that that frame of video is, is captured, we convert it to metadata. So when I do my search, I don't need to choose a camera and then go back and say, now do a search on this camera and then wait two hours while it processes the video. Uh, I also don't have to, once I've processed that camera, walk through and take 10 minutes to, to shuttle through an hour of video to be able to find something. Because as you can see here, I've already classified every object that I have uh, in, in that image. And so my search results in this example on, the, on this Jackson Hole camera literally took less than two seconds. And that's one of the powers of Agent VI. Our search is it's virtually instantaneous. Literally, it's as fast as the database, the, hard, the hardware that the database is running on. But just so I don't talk all about Jackson Hole uh, and the snow scene here, we do a lot of other things that are, you know, would be normal for analytics. All of the perimeter security, so things like boundaries, uh, we do that. Uh, fence lines with thermal cameras, that's obviously bread and butter, uh, basic expectation for analytics. We do a lot in transportation, which could include, uh, for example, uh, you know, rail lines. So here's a good example of actually where you might have a rail crossing that you need to guard, uh, you know, or or set off alarms for. We do that, and then obviously we do ports and airports. But, uh, but we've been around now for 18 years. We have a, a very mature offering. But now I have this ability that I can actually manage this entire system. Uh, across the world, or in the case of your customers, it might be multiple customers across just a state or multiple states. Um, so it's all federated, but it's now using the most advanced analytics engine in the marketplace. In fact, obviously we brag about that, but we launched this system uh, February of 2016. 
So just about five years ago. Um, and we are already on our second generation analytics or AI engine. So over those five years, we learned a lot. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I say it with without with any, without any grace, there's a lot of startups out there with a lot of money. They're running around buying customers expensive, you know, drinks at the bar and, and steaks, but they're basically using analytics that they got from a free toolkit that they picked up from NVIDIA. We, we were there five years ago. Those toolkits don't work very well. They're okay to get started, but we realized, you know, even by 2016, when we launched our system, that you really need to do a lot of fundamental development to have a good, reliable analytic AI engine. And now we're on to our second generation AI engine. Um, and I have no, there's no doubt in my mind, we, we crush all the startups that are out there because we have real customers and we've had real customers that, you know, had to get their systems working and we've learned from that. Um, so all right, give us a chance. You're going to find our analytics um, perform excellent especially compared to a lot of the startups that are out there promising a lot, but they're really secretly just buying customers' interest, you know, with, with venture capital money, you know, where, you know, hey, if you get $5 million or $10 million in venture money, then, you know, just go ahead and buy the customer drinks and hope they give you an order because you don't have to prove your system works. We've been around a long time. We can't play like that. You know, we win deals because we show our system uh, working. So I think with that, I'm going to stop and I am going to open it up for questions. This is a, you know, always a little bit dangerous, just like a live demo. If you want to see a more advanced demo, just contact somebody from Agent VI um, and we can do a more deep demo. Uh, but I am going to try to open this up for questions if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, or maybe if you see you have a raise hand option, maybe you could even raise your hand and put in some questions. Um, yeah, if not, I'll answer several of the standard questions that we get asked a lot. So here we go. Let's see. So does anybody have any questions that they would like to enter into the raise hand or the chat? It's not a big issue if nobody does. I see my old friend John Edwards on here. He's either tuned me out by now or I did such a good job. I have no questions, which is hard to imagine, but John's probably just tuned me out. He knows me well enough now. He's probably ignoring me um, at this point. All right, so let me let me go ahead and answer several of the questions that, um, oh, there's somebody. Oh, it was from John. <laughs> okay, John didn't give me a question. He's right on. So that means he's tuned me out. So let me go ahead and answer just in the last uh, five minutes, we have several of the most common questions we get uh, from customers. First, everybody wants to know about pricing. Um, and, and really, the, I can't answer that on the call because the, the easiest way to answer that for a customer, particularly a customer who wants to be able to upgrade their system is to generate a fresh quote for them. But I will tell you our intent on pricing. Our intent for Anobi pricing was not to try and increase the pricing over Savvy. Every once in a while, depending on the specific configuration that a customer has, maybe the price will go up a little bit for Anobi. But I'll tell you, for the times it goes up, there's other scenarios where the pricing goes down because we tried to keep the pricing as neutral as possible. On the upgrades, if you have savvy customers that want to upgrade to a Novi, you need to talk with them now because we tried to keep new system pricing fairly consistent between a savvy and a Novi, but we really want customers to upgrade with a Novi. So some of the upgrade pricing is very, very, um, I mean, to the point where for the same maintenance money they're paying for savvy, they could be using a Novi. That's we just, and with our hosting, then they're saving the cost on hardware maintenance. So, so it's actually the net savings going forward is, is negative to us and positive to them, meaning they're going to spend less money going forward by converting to Anobi if they use our hosted. And even on the on-prem, we're giving very deep discounts 
And so the, the, the cost savings to go to Anovi is much better. So the pricing one, just trust me when I say, talk with your salesperson, we'll go through the scenario, we'll generate a quote, uh, but it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good option um, for them. The other question that I get the most um, frequently uh, is it's an easy question to answer, but it's a tricky question for the customer. Because what I find is customers fall in love with their hardware. In fact, it, I'm still shocked how many times we'll be dealing with a big customer and they'll be like, hey, those servers I've got are, are you know, those are awesome servers. You need to use my, you know, I've got 10 servers here in Iraq someplace. And we'll say, okay, fine, give us the specs for the servers. And then we'll look at it and we'll find, well, those servers are actually, you think they're great and you think they're expensive because all you can remember is eight years ago when you spent all that money for those servers, that was a big purchase for you. But eight years later, there's, you know, in the case of like Intel and, and servers, that's literally like four generations of improvement. So that server they spent $5,000 on eight years ago is now a thousand dollar server in today's terms, maybe if they could even buy it. All right, so we get asked a lot, can you reuse my hardware? And the answer is uh, yes, maybe, as long as the customer understands that using old hardware ultimately comes down to how many cameras they can support with that hardware. Now, one of the things that we did that was a major um, in fact, again, I think we're, we're pretty far ahead of the industry. As I've already said, I say this without trying to pick a fight with NVIDIA, because we do have a lot of customers and deployed with NVIDIA, but those were early customers. And what we found was we could get the same or better channel counts by using now what is our, op our Intel optimized algorithms, meaning we worked with Intel to optimize the algorithms so if you really want an NVIDIA card, you're just putting extra money into that server to get the same, or in some cases, less camera chat count than we can get from that same server by just using the native Xeon processors, for example, in the server. So our, our channel count per hardware, meaning our efficiency for hardware, once again, that's been an area that's been a, we've been a leader in for almost 18 years, is the amount of cameras we can get for the amount of hardware you need to buy we're still the leader in that space. But if you're gonna bring us old hardware, then you, you, you're, you're gonna not get as many cameras on that hardware. It's your efficiency loss as a customer, but sometimes customers want that. Um, and we've done surprisingly well, even on some old hardware. The truth is more often than not, the better option is, you know, and, and this, I'll give a real example. Let's take that customer who has 10 servers that they paid $50,000 for let's say eight years ago, in real terms, they might be able to buy a new server today for five to $8,000, they could run that entire system on one server. That, that's how much the improvement in performance has been with some of the hardware, the Intel processing over the last eight years, and we're optimized for that. So, so yeah, so again, if you have customers with existing hardware, just uh, give us a call and we know how to work that out and we'll be happy to work through those. So, uh, the other question I get asked, which usually just proves that the customer's not listening, is they'll say, what if I don't want to use your cloud? And then I'll say, well, you remember I had the slide that I said you can build this on-prem. We can also do it on-prem, just like we do on the cloud. You then have to build uh, your own hardware and you have to maintain it. So customers who ask, what if I don't want the cloud? We just say, fine, then buy the on-prem. But as I joke, usually that's customers who weren't listening to the presentation because at the moment, you know, we're probably somewhere, I mean, I don't know if we're 50-50, but you know, we have a lot of large customers that still don't want to move to the cloud. Okay, they build on-prem. And then we have an increasing number of large customers and most of our small customers just go with the cloud because it's so much more efficient. All right, it looks like I did get one more question. All right, it looks like... Uh, the question is uh, Agent VI from 2018. Um, so, so if they have an Agent VI system that was purchased in 2018, okay, so by definition, Agent the, the savvy system in 2018, uh, well, it, actually, if it's an Anovi 2018 system, 
then that's that system is already being upgraded. I mean, because Anovi has the concept of um, up, if, if it's under maintenance uh, and it's on prem, it's being upgraded. If it's in the cloud, it's actually already been upgraded because we upgrade the cloud routinely. If it's a savvy system that is um, on site, then they have the options I just explained a minute ago. They can convert to our agent VI hosted. That's a very efficient um, you know, conversion if they're under maintenance. If they're not under maintenance, you're going to need to talk to your agent VI salesperson because that's, you know, we, we right now only offer the, e, the, uh, the special program for customers that are under maintenance. But, you know, sometimes we can work with a customer to figure out how to get them caught up in maintenance. Um, so I, I would just suggest in those scenarios, it's the easiest thing if you're trying to upgrade a customer is talk to your agent VI salesperson because then we can get a sales engineer involved, work through all the details. We've done that a lot now. We're, we're, we're getting pretty good at the, the whole upgrade process, both pricing and also technically. So just give your, your salesperson a call. That's their job. All right. And I think with that, we're, we're right at the uh, end of our time. Um, thank you everyone for uh, joining um, and hope you found this session you know, helpful. And again, if you have any questions about Anovi in general or upgrading your system, just go ahead and you know, give your salesperson a call and we'll work through all of the details. And with that said, I, I'll set you free and wish you all a very good day.